Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are back talking about the Rooted in Wellness campaign. This is a year-long partnership with the Northwestern Community Services Board Prevention and Wellness. Corey Pence is here with us. She is their communication specialist. Corey, welcome back to the show. I have to tell you, I've got some serious positive feedback from different listeners who really like this series and like the way that you have broken this down into manageable chunks. Some of them have said, I couldn't do all of these things at once. So I'm really glad you're giving me a month at a time to work on each of these dimensions of wellness. So kudos to you guys for structuring it this way. Oh, I'm so glad. It's definitely been something that we've been wanting to do since we've been doing our Rooted In campaigns for the last couple of years. We started it with Rooted In Kindness, and then we did Rooted In Positivity. And now this year we're doing Rooted In Whole Wellness because we feel like it's something that everybody needs to really focus on, especially with the last couple of years and getting back to normal after COVID. Just having a way to take things as digestible steps is really important and helpful. I don't think a lot of people have really realized the impact that the last three years has had on our day-to-day lives. I think I I am in that category of, oh, you know what? COVID wasn't that bad for me. I could, I could work from home. I got dogs. I didn't really want to have to talk to people anyway. I got through it okay. But now that I'm getting back out, I'm tired from getting in the car and talking to more than two people at a time and very overwhelmed a whole lot easier than I was five, six years ago. I think we all need to stop and really take a good hard look at how it has impacted us and what we can do to get back to feeling better overall. Absolutely. We've lost some of our coping mechanisms that we had built up over all of the years prior to because we didn't need those coping skills when we were stuck at home and had limited contact with people and relearning how to be back in society and in a healthy and effective way. I think that's another really good reason of why we need to bring this to the forefront. I think we've done that pretty well with starting out with our financial wellness. Then we moved on to social. And last month we did spiritual, which we went at from a self-care point of view, which I don't like using overused metaphor, but you can't pour from an empty cup. Because if you don't have energy, you can't share that energy and you can't share your perspective in a healthy way. Sometimes getting that energy comes from so many different places. It's one of the things that you touched on last month is spiritual wellness doesn't necessarily have to come from a place of religion or church. It can come from a place of yoga or a place of art. The other thing that helps fill that cup sometimes is getting physical. And that's something else a lot of us haven't done for quite a few years. I can't necessarily say I did it pre-pandemic. So it's going to be a double whammy for Gabriel today to help get me into a physical wellness space. Gabriel Lee is here with us. He is with Northwestern Prevention Collaborative. Did I get that right, Gabriel? You got that right. Fantastic. Community (laughs) liaison, youth events coordinator, all of the things that just scream physical wellness and be active. So go ahead, give it your best shot. Make me be physically well. I actually like what, Co- what Corey said when she said you can't pour from it, from an empty cup and the whole rooted in wellness campaign. If I could start broadly, I totally agree with all the eight dimensions of wellness, because what I've been trying to do for the past few years is in order to reach every goal that I have, whether it's personal or professional, I want to make sure that my house is in order because I feel like the more that my house is in order, the more that I can give, the more that I'm healthier, the more that I'm fiscally sound, the more that I'm spiritually well, I can do more good in the world. And for me, physical wellness has been that mainstay that I've kept in my life from childhood. It really started with my father, who was an amateur bodybuilder and competitive powerlifter. And I always saw his trophies going up. And it's funny because we lived in various places as a child, some smaller places. And even if we were in a small apartment, my dad never went without his weight equipment. You'd have a living room couch, a small VCR, and of course, a squat rack, a bench (laughs) press. And that was just normal to us. Wherever we went, Pops was always going to make sure that he got his physical wellness in. So I'd have to give it to him that he instilled that into me. And the cool thing about that is I was talking to him the other day and I think he's 54 right now. And I asked him like how old he felt. And he said, honestly, I think I feel the same way I felt when I was in my thirties, early thirties. 
And to me, that's really what physical wellness is about. Of course, it's cool to look good and be in shape and feel great and jump if you want to jump, backflip if you want to backflip. But more importantly, I'd like to age gracefully. I really admire how my father lives his life. He really is young at heart and young with his body. He gives my brother and I a run for our money and he works out at the YMCA and anybody who's there, he always challenges them and he's still got it. I'll have to give him that. So I'm really excited about being able to continue to be growing in all those other dimensions of wellness. But Physical wellness for me has always been a mainstay. The best thing about that is if I can make sure that I get a workout in the morning, if all else fails, if my day goes terribly wrong, at least I accomplished something very early on. And then even just feeling not tired and capable to go throughout the day. That's why I think that physical wellness is, a, all of them are very important, but I know for me, physical wellness might be the easiest because I see the utility of it all and I've been doing it for so long. And it's one of those things too, where it's very adaptable. You yeah. don't necessarily have to have all of this expensive equipment. You don't have to do a lot of things. It could be something as simple as walking more around your neighborhood, taking your dogs for a walk. It could be something that's very adaptable to your life that you build upon. I don't have the studies on me, so I won't quote it directly, but from what I've been reading lately, walking is directly linked to our mortality. So the more you walk, the older you get, the longer you live. That correlation that scientists are now finding. And it's cool because walking for me ties into my spiritual wellness because when I go for a walk, that's when I like try to connect. That's when I try to review everything that happened, game plan for what I have going on in the future, be grateful, be mindful. But while I'm doing that, the longer I take to be connected, the longer I walk. I might spend 30 minutes of being meditative and being connective. And then you look down at your step counter, and you go, oh, I'm doing both things at the same time. Not everyone wants to weight lift. Not everyone wants to join a gym. But walking is something, if you're able to do it, I know not everyone's fortunate to do that. But if you can walk, you should walk. If you walk every night after dinner, or if you have a dog and you make sure your dog gets in that walk every day, I think you'll be shocked to see how young it keeps you and how good it can be for all those other dimensions of wellness. Do you find that a lot of people just don't start because they think that they have to do way more than they do right out of the gate? So they're like, oh, look, I can't do 10,000 steps in a day. So I'm not even going to try to do 3,000 when 3,000 would still be an improvement. And then eventually you'll get to that 10. A hundred percent. I believe in ramping up when it comes to any sort of physical fitness and I still do it. For example, I don't really run that often. I do a lot of weightlifting and sort of high intensity cardio, but I don't do long distance running. So if I were to start that, my sustained cardio would be pretty bad. I would never start off with trying to run two miles at my fastest. I really would try, probably just see how long I could run for at any given pace. And then after that, I just try to uh, compound on that success each day. And it's intimidating getting back out there if you're if you consider yourself to be out of shape or just haven't been some of those muscles that have been atrophied for a little while. I would just consider doing the bare minimum and then just trying to build off of that. And I would recommend doing that with any sort of habit you're trying to start is just do it. And there's other things that I do in life that I try to make sure, hey, I told myself I would work out five minute, 45 sessions a week, but I can't do it but three times this week. So let me just make sure I take a little bit extra longer walk or I get in some push-ups if I can. So I just try to do something just to make sure I'm still staying sharp in that area. One of the things that tends to keep me motivated, I got an Apple watch last year and the Apple watch doesn't necessarily keep me motivated sometimes when it tells me what a slug I've been at the end of some days, but it also has these really unique challenges at the beginning of the month. It'll send me a notification and say, your March challenge is to meet your exercise goal 16 times within the month. So they're not crazy out of reach. And when I see those, I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this the first 16 days and get it over with so that I at least get that little badge because I am all about having those little badges. Badges. And then what will happen is I'll realize at the end of the day, I'll look at it and I'm maybe a minute away from exercise. Yeah. So I just get up and walk around the house or run the vacuum or again, exercise doesn't have to be what we traditionally think of as exercise, but it really keeps me motivated to meet those goals because then I can say, look at my little badge. 
<laughs> yes, that sort of a sense of accomplishment is so important. That little dopamine hit of figuring out like, oh, I did something. So I think the tracking devices can be helpful for a lot of people. Something that I do is anytime I try to do something that might not be the best for my physical wellness, but I try to enjoy life a bit. My fiance and I try to make this rule, at least in the summertime when it's warm, that if we're going to go out for a dessert or a treat, fortunately, we live in an area where we can walk to all those places. So we make sure that we walk there, <laughs> we earn our dopamine hit, and then we walk back. <laughs> it's just little things like that, that you can make it fun and competitive, especially if you have a competitive partner or you just need validation. I find that I need validation in a lot of areas. So creating that and putting that into your journey of success, I think is very helpful. I used to do that when Route 11 potato chips was at the end of the block from where I live. And mm -hmm. I don't think it was the same thing because I'm pretty sure I was eating more potato chips than I was working out on the walk to get there. But then they moved and now that's not a problem. I'm not walking to Mount Jackson. So I'm in fairly good shape now. Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to talk some more about this, about sometimes partnering up with somebody, girlfriends, having your dogs be involved, or even I, there are people in our neighborhood that put a leash on their cat and walk around the neighborhood. So let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back. We are covering the Rooted in Wellness campaign, Eight Dimensions of Wellness. This month is physical wellness. Corey Pence is here on the screen with me. She's a communication specialist for the Northwestern Community Services Board Prevention and Wellness. Gabriel Lee is with us as well. He is with the Northwestern Prevention Collaborative. We're going to talk more about physical wellness when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Hello, I'm Mariah Garneau, and I am a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor School. And we are partnering with a local environmental nonprofit, Sustainability Matters, to help yourself while helping the planet. Here is a helpful daily tip to promote sustainability in your life. The fast fashion we purchase from stores is mass produced and often uses cheaper materials. As a result, they wear out and end up in landfills. Buying clothing that is eco-friendly, fair trade, or made from recycled materials is better for the environment. Buying second hand makes one garment last longer, reduces the demand for mass production, and also saves you money. You can even donate or sell old clothing instead of throwing them away. Every small action we take towards saving the environment is another step closer to saving our planet. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is all about wellness today, the Rooted in Wellness campaign. Corey Pence is here with me. She's a communication specialist with the Northwestern Community Services Board Prevention and Wellness. This is our fourth. Is it the fourth? It seems like we've been doing this for years now, Corey. And it's only our fourth episode together. We're talking about physical wellness. In the past, we've talked about financial, social, spiritual. You can find all those podcasts on the valleytodaypodcast.com. Um, today, Gabriel Lee is with us. He is with Northwestern Prevention Collaborative. We're talking about physical wellness. I was joking with you, Gabriel, when we went to break about walking to the potato chip factory that used to be down the street. I would guess that diet plays a pretty large role in physical wellness and not of the potato chip variety. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I'd be lying if I was saying that Route 11, especially sour cream and onion flavor, didn't get me more times than I like to admit. But the cool thing about, I think, the way I've set up my diet and my physical exercise is that I try to allow myself, I think you need to enjoy things in life, but I think everything's got to be in moderation and you just have to be aware of what you're putting in your body. We were talking during the break. I would say that for me, 20% of the energy that I put into physical wellness goes into being active and exercising and things like that. But 80% of it, I think goes into what I'm eating on a daily basis. We eat so many times throughout the day and whatever we put in is fueling us or not fueling us. For me, this is newer in my journey, probably for the past five or six years since I've graduated college. I thought just because I looked physically in shape outwardly, I thought everything was good on the inside. But after just a few health things, I started to realize, look, you can have a great outward physical appearance, but it could be really bad things going on underneath the surface. So for the first time, I really learned how to eat healthy. I think even growing up in the household that I did, my parents did their best of what they thought was healthy, but I think there was a lot of misconceptions 
about what foods were healthy. When I think back on some of the things that we ate, it wasn't the healthiest, but it was healthier than some of the things that we could alternatively be doing. So for me, what I always try to do is stay away from processed foods. Whole foods is what I try to comprise most of my diet of. I try not to drink any of my calories, meaning that juices, sodas. Well, if you're trying to lose weight, drinking calories is probably it for a lot of people where that weight gain is coming from. So I try to drink, we were talking about water and I know that we have some cool things coming up with some water challenges, but yeah, I try to drink specifically water or coffee. Coffee is cool for me because I pretty much fast until two or three I haven't eaten yet. And that helps me stay lean in, in a certain sense. And then added sugars is another thing that I try to stay away from. So whole foods, try not to drink your calories and drink your sugars and just staying away from added sugars. Those three things. And then also just finding recipes that you really like that are pretty healthy. I'm not the best cook, but I have found some staples of mine that I have cooked them so much that I feel like I cook it well now and I cook it for other people and they can confirm that this is a really good recipe. If it tastes good, it's a lot easier to consume it regularly. <laughs> I know a lot of people who are trying to get back in shape and they'll hit the gym hard and they'll do two hour sessions or run a lot. But if it doesn't change in the kitchen, it really won't change on the scale. With that being said, not really judging it by the scale, just judging on how you feel. And you know yourself better than anything else. I can tell when I've probably gotten out of the swing of things for too long, but I don't try to beat myself up over it because at the end of the day, what I'm trying to accomplish is, like I said, age gracefully and feel young as I get older, like my father achieved. And that's really my goal. So I think the diet is going to be the best trick in doing that. And I'll say my dad didn't really know much about the diet growing up. So if I can take the things that he did and then come at it with this new information I have surrounding diet, I feel pretty good about how I'll feel when I'm in his age. So I'm looking forward to it, actually. And you bring up some really good points, too, when it comes to misconceptions and generational thinking, because I am of the same generation as your dad. And there are things that I fed to my kid that I thought were healthy that now later that I've learned what's healthy and what's not, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this used to be a regular on the dinner table. And we probably shouldn't have done that. But the thing that strikes me personally is the drinking your calories, because I think so many times, all of us, we don't think about what's in the cup. We think about what's on the plate so we can be eating healthier, but if we're still doing the two or three Starbucks trips a day, or we're doing sodas and we're drinking sweet tea with lots and lots of sugar and not making what we feel is progress, we give up on the eating healthy when it's not the eating healthy that is the problem. Yeah. The hard thing about drinking your calories is you don't feel full or satiated. So if you're going to eat something that's a guilty pleasure, I would recommend eating something that's going to at least make you feel full. And you have to monitor what you're eating. I, I was eating some popcorn yesterday and it's fairly healthy popcorn, but I didn't realize when you look at the, and I don't want to get too off topic, but reading labels is very important. I saw 90 calories, but then when I looked in the bag said one of eight servings. So yeah, I actually had to do eight times 90. So when I ate the whole bag, I was like, oh, I ate close to a thousand calories. And I just, I didn't realize that. And drinking your calories is, a, is another way where you can start to see how things add up very quick. So in a sense, you'd be better off eating something that <laughs> at least made you feel satiated in a sense. People used to give me so much grief about the amount of coffee that I drank. So I started at one point offsetting for every cup of coffee that I had, I would have a bottle of water because I felt like I needed more true water than the caffeine and the coffee that I was drinking. I would imagine, Corey, that's a that's an easy way to incorporate this drinking challenge, this water challenge that you guys are going to kick off. Yes. So one of the things that we're doing this month is a drinking your water challenge. I have a form that you can get on our website that has the calculations of how much water you should be drinking for your body. It's half your body weight in ounces. And then if you do moderate or heavy exercise, you add 12 ounces per half an hour of exercise. So I was looking at that today. I was like, oh, okay, I need to step up my water. <laughs> so I have the form that you could get on our website so you can keep track. And then if you send it back to us, you'll get put in for a drawing for some kind of a prize it has to do with physical wellness. And we're also doing a move your body challenge. It's tracking how much exercise are you doing 
what kind of exercise are you doing? So if you're doing something just walking, that's just getting your heart rate up, they recommend that you get about 150 minutes a week, about 20 minutes a day. If you're doing high interval exercises or you're doing high intensity, then you drop that down to 75 minutes a week. It just depends on what kind of exercise you're doing, but we want to make sure you're moving. So we have those two challenges that we're working on this month and you can find all of that information as well as other resources about how to update your physical health or how to participate in challenges on our nwcsbwellness.com. We also have been posting all of our podcast episodes from here on a playlist. You can get those on our website. You can also find all of our previous sessions that we've done on wellness. They're also on our website. So we've got videos and worksheets and coloring pages and all of that on our website. Gabriel, going back to something we were talking about earlier with setting unrealistic goals. When I was talking about meeting the different challenges and stuff on my Apple Watch, I realized that I had it on for a good two or three months and never even hit the walking goal or the movement goal or anything else. And then I thought, okay, this is, this is starting to impact my mental health. I'm really feeling more of a slug than what I actually am. So I went in and just lowered everything. I lowered all of the things because you can do that and thought, you know what, I'm going to start fairly low, probably lower than I should have. But I'm going to build my confidence up so that I can start hitting those. And then once I started on a regular basis hitting eight minutes of exercise every day, I bumped it to 10 minutes. And then once I started doing 10 minutes every day, I bumped it to 12. That's a great way to ease into it too without having any shame and just feeling worse for trying to feel better. A hundred percent. And I would agree with just lowering the bar for yourself and just being okay with growing into that. And also just framing your exercise and your diet in a way that is conducive to to make you want to do it even more. For me, working out is fun, but I know for a lot of people, it's not fun. It's not fun. The strain on their muscles or their heart during cardio, it's just not fun. It's not a, it's not a pain that they enjoy. I particularly enjoy (laughs) that sort of pain, but for people who don't try to frame it in a way like you would like to be there for your spouse even longer or you would like to be able to play with your kids longer, whatever it's going to take for you to frame it in a way where you feel motivated to do it, I would recommend doing it because I know for so long, a lot of people were just so rah, rah, let's go. You got to want it more than you want air. And (laughs) that's just motivation is temporary. I I found in life. So you really just got to frame it in a way that just makes sense for you, because if not, it won't be enjoyable and it should be enjoyable. Some of us just want to go up a flight of stairs and not be winded when we get to the top. (laughs) That's okay, a good so you, goal. You, you'd be fine over there with your goals. My goals are <laughs> getting to the top of the stairs without being yes. winded. <laughs> I, I am one of those people who I do not like doing a lot of physical stuff because I'm just so mentally tired all the time because I'm mom of a young kid. But I found the day mornings that I get up at 515 and ride my bike or do some kind of exercise first thing in the morning, I have more energy mm-hmm. that I can use throughout the day. I started going to the gym and I have been doing small group training exercises with a class and doing HIT. And that is so much more enjoyable being around a group of people. That can be another thing that if you are having a hard time getting to do something, find a group that does it join a group that's already doing something that you find semi-interesting because that camaraderie will help you do it even more. I have no doubt that if we look at five or six of our friends in our closest circle, there are going to be one or two of them that even if they've never said it out loud or thinking, you know, I need to be taking better care of myself. And if you bring it up and say, hey, let's start this walking group or let's all do this one activity together, you're going to get some of them to say, okay, I'm in. And it's so much easier to do it when you've got friends to hold you accountable and you're doing it together as a fun activity activity instead of, oh, I have to go work out. <laughs> Boy, that was such a good point. And Janet, just to use your example, if you do it that way, you're not showing up for exercise. You're showing up for your friend and your girl talk time, whatever it is. It's like, we're walking, but we're mostly talking and catching up about our day. You don't realize it. And the group thing is a big deal. I think some people may enjoy exercise, but just not solo. A lot of us grew up playing sports in high school, and now we don't have that sort of structure and camaraderie anymore. 
And it might be good just to get that back and feel like a little kid again. I think a lot of it is just feeling young at heart and in your mind. So the group thing is a big thing as well. My husband gave me grief a couple of years ago. It was early on in the pandemic. And I said, you know what? If we're going to be in the house, I'm going to, I'm going to get buff. I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start doing sit-ups. I'm going to do all of this stuff. I need to get on Amazon and I need to buy weights and I need the arm weights and the ankle weights. And he's looking at me. He said, walk around the house carrying a can of soup. Before you go by and spending all this money on Amazon, get a can of chunky soup out of the pantry and you walk around with them in your hands, walking around the house. It doesn't have to cost a ton of money to start something like this either. The only thing I would recommend spending money on in your fitness journey was just getting better quality foods and scheduling doctor's appointments you need to have just to make sure you're good inside and outside because you can do so many things for free. Walking's free. If you live in a rural area where you don't really have access to maybe sidewalks, or if you live in an urban area, maybe it's not the safest for you to be walking with traffic and things like that. If you have a space to walk, even if it's a circle up the cul-de-sac, just find a friend and you guys can spend that time connecting and you want to realize you're walking. Very lucky in this area in particular in the Shenandoah Valley. And we have Jim Barnett Park in the city of Winchester. We have Sharando Park in Stephen City. Middletown has a park just down the street from my house. Warren has a park. Berryville has Rose Hill Park. They all have parks and they all have high schools. And yes. the high schools have tracks. And that's so open there's to the something public. else that's very easy to do. It's well lit. It's a really easy way to just walk around the track at your local high school. Also, we probably live in one of the most trail accessible places in America. Right. And those are free as well. So it's just another way to connect spiritually because you'll be out in nature. And then there's environmental wellness as well. So you can knock out two or three of these dimensions walking in the wilderness around here. And if you're not going to make me lift weights at the end, Gabriel, I'll start a walking club with you. (laughs) (laughs) It's also amazing what kind of exercises you can find on YouTube. If you want to have something that you can follow along with when you're getting started, even Apple TV has whole exercise programs you can watch and you can pick how long you want to do it. And they have modifications already built in. And like we were talking about last month, Corey, yoga counts as exercise. Yes. You don't have to always be necessarily working up a sweat and moving frantically. Yoga also counts as exercise because there's so much stretching and things like that involved. Yeah, it's strength building, which is one of the things that is also recommended to do two days of strength building exercises every week. Corey, throughout the month, while you're focusing on physical wellness, I know you're going to have some videos. We talked about the water intake challenge and the move challenge. Can people reach out to you, reach out to Gabriel and say, hey, I think I'm stuck or I'm not really sure where to start. Do you offer advice to people as well to get them started on their physical wellness journey? I know I won't have a whole lot of advice in that aspect. (laughs) Not an exercise professional. I'm still at that base level myself, but I can definitely provide some places where I've gotten some exercises. So I will be sharing some things throughout the month of how to get started. And if you start to find yourself in a rut, maybe looking at micronutrients and Are you taking in enough food? Are you actually eating enough? Because sometimes if our body goes into starvation mode, you're not going to see weight loss or change anyway. But I'll definitely defer to people who know more about that than myself. (laughs) (laughs) And people can always send in their tips. Like I joked about the soup can. People can easily say, hey, you know what works really well? Do this instead of that. Yeah, let's get everyone in saying what works for them. Because I think with a full community support, anyone who's hesitant or just needs a little bit of push, I think with your audience, we can definitely get them going in the right direction. I will say that NPC's website, we do a lot of articles on physical wellness. I just wrote one last month about habits. It was sort of a homage to seeing how our New Year's resolutions are going. And for those who may have failed, I went into why you might have failed and some of the things that you could do to be better about developing those positive habits and breaking those negative habits. So I think for this month, I'll be also writing articles more centered around physical wellness. I would recommend looking there as well. Basically, it comes down to drink more water. You can't drink too much water. Eat less junk, processed foods, junk foods, things like that. You don't have to cut them out altogether. Mm -hmm. You need to pay more attention to how much of them you're eating and eat less of them. Eat more healthy food and just move more in some way, shape, or form. Move more. Can I add one more between this and diet? I don't know which one I would give more credence to, but this one is very neglected by majority of Americans. Get enough sleep. 
that's where our body regenerates. That's where our body heals itself. If you are a male, that's where your testosterone production happens. Sleep, 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 eight hours. I know sleep is the easiest thing for us to take away because if we sleep less, we can get more done, but you will be paying for it on the back end. So if you can get enough sleep, your body will thank you. Your mind will thank you. Your spouse will thank you. Everyone around you will thank you. So yes, sleep, sleep, sleep. That's one we all underestimate because it's super easy to take out the equation. So yes, if you can get eight hours, you're a rock star. Corey, Gabriel, thank you both for taking some time to educate me on physical wellness today. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. I will be back tomorrow. I will have a brand new episode of The Valley today ready to go for you. It's Tourism Tuesday. Gabriel's going to appreciate this. I took a trip to Newmarket last week to John Henry General Store. So Gary Hahn and I had a conversation at John Henry General Store. I've never seen so many squash and potatoes and carrots and onions and fresh produce in my life as what <laughs> I saw at John Henry General Store. And then to top it all off, I got the best ice cream sandwich I have also ever had mm. in my life for the drive home. Have a listen to that conversation tomorrow a few minutes after noon. The podcast, of course, will be up at thevalleytodaypodcast.com.